all these great folks that have kind of helped you pave your way and then comes Wayne Kirkpatrick and the song and uh, yeah. how did you connect with Wayne Wayne, Wayne and I I knew who he was when he was in Michael W. Smith's band mm-hmm. and I was in Whiteheart okay so at certain festivals we'd cross paths uh-huh. and um, so I just knew who he was and then I remember getting a song pitched to Whiteheart uh-huh. if I'm not mistaken that had his name on it that's, so that's the first time I heard one of his songs other than something Michael was doing. And then um, Brown Bannister, mm-hmm. who produced the Freedom album, yep. and Tommy and Chris McHugh and I went to work for playing on some other records that he was producing, found ourselves on a co-production thing that he was doing with Wayne, with okay. Wayne for Kim Hill. Okay. So when I played on that, that's the first time I was in the room with Wayne for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. And not too long after that, I would get a call from him. Do you, can you, because I had done a gut string thing mm-hmm. and had, he knew that I had my dad's Harper Valley PTA Dobro. Love it. And said, can you, would you come do uh, a gut string solo for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then before I was scheduled to show up, he said, oh, and bring the Dobro too. There might be something else. Mm-hmm. And it was for Susan Ashton's first record. I love Susan. So Susan Kim, those were like, yeah, those so I, great alto voices. <laughs> so, so I start off, uh, you know, going to do a gut string solo and a dobro passage, and then end up spending two weeks with just Wayne in the studio doing all the guitars for the record. And that was sort of the birth of our friendship yeah. and working relationship. And we would, at some point, look at each other and go, why aren't we writing together and pursue writing songs together? Yeah. And some like the, among the first three or four songs we wrote, three of them are on the Garth Brooks Chris Gaines album, you know. And then at some point, me and him and Tommy would uh, write "Change the World" together because we had some downtime okay, on one that's, of those sessions. Okay, so I was going to ask where did change? Who actually? Whose initial baby was that? Tommy was. We were in between takes over at Omni. No, 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 no Omni Quad. Okay. Quad tracking these first four songs that and Wayne and I were fashioning this group together, mm-hmm. trying to, we were going to go for like a pop deal and all this kind of stuff. And Tommy and Chris and me and Wayne were in the studio recording tracks for these first four songs. How did it get to Eric? Or oh, did it go to? That's did, next. I was going to say, did it get to Babyface first? No, or, here, no? I'll tell you if you want to know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it uh, and it stopped me if you want me to be br- no, 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 brief. D- dude, you're doing great. So, okay. um, change the world is obviously one of the most easily connected songs with with your work i would i i'm actually dying to know how this happens so go all right <laughs> so we're just on some downtime in between takes of what we were doing at, at quad mm-hmm. and tommy said fellas listen to this is this something this group could do and he played us the beginning chord changes of change the world mm-hmm. how the verse is on the song you mm-hmm. know? and he even had a title change the world and at, and I remember thinking in my head, that sounds enough like Paul McCartney that I like it, you know. Yeah. And Wayne was probably thinking, well, that sounds enough like James Taylor. I like it. Yeah. You know, Fogelberg. And then Tommy was probably in his head thinking, hope this doesn't sound too much like Stevie Wonder for these, <laughs> for these guys to like it. I yeah. mean, I'm just guessing. Yeah. But what all that to say that all of these styles are, you find it and you can connect it. This yeah. one song yeah. has is drawing from all these different pools of and has a timeless element to it. But um, so it would go dormant for a while. Then mm-hmm. Wayne would say, "Hey, can you put that on a tape?" Mm-hmm. And so Tommy would put those chord changes on a tape, and then Wayne would work on it for a while. And he wrote a chorus lyric mm-hmm. and all but one line of a second verse. Mm-hmm. It ended up being the second verse. And then went dormant again. And then I said to him one day, hey, I've got one more chance to throw some songs to the guy in New York that's had us on a developmental deal hold for a year. Okay. RCA in New York at the time. I said, Where, where's that song at now? And so Wayne forked over what he had been able to add to what Tommy had started. So I looked at it and wrote a first verse lyric intro changes which became the solo changes for Clapton's record and Wayne's missing line in the second verse wow and this took a year 
This was over the course of a wow. year. Wow, okay. So I drove with the finished song up to Columbus, Ohio, where Tommy was up there working on a church choir album in some guy's basement, and we sat and did the demo, all but the vocals. Mm. And so I took a two-inch tape, put it in my trunk of my Honda, mm -hmm. drove back, and I made a cassette to play it in the car mm -hmm. because I had yet to finish the lyric, actually. Okay. So now that I have a track on the way back to Nashville, and I still have this tape, uh -huh. I'm, I'm just and you hear car wind noise car and me singing over the cassette playing in the car yeah trying to come up with what the words are for yeah. the verses that the first verse that was still needing to be done and then I got back and went to this time Ami B and put the acoustic guitar and did all the vocals and so at this point I send it to the guy in New York because he had been saying give me a pop hit Give us a pop hit. We can uh -huh. get you an alternative hit out of those first four songs. Yeah. Give us a pop hit. And so it I thought, is a, it is I thought a cool here it hit. is. Yeah. Send it up there. And he finally gave us an answer after a year. I'm going to pass, he said. I don't hear the hit. I'm going to pass. So Is he kicking himself now? I, I, I hope I, not. I, I, I hope not. No, I hope not. But I, 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 <laughs> so anyway, so here's what happens next. In, the, uh, in December of that year, I had, had been writing for in this developmental deal I was doing under the MCA umbrella, mm -hmm. right? That thing went so sour that I can't really tell you how bad the deal went in December of that year mm -hmm. because I don't want to use any profanity on understood your show. Completely. God, I understood <laughs> no, completely. I mean, it was just one of these deals where people, certain people that were key figures in that company from the West Coast to Nashville quit. Yeah. They quit. MCA, so my deal fell into the onto the desk of a guy who was not a friend to me at this time, and when he found out that we weren't going to give RCA another ninety days to develop mm -hmm. after all this time, he threatened to sue me for my advance for that, that I had written for that year, give him back the money, right? Yeah. So I got an attorney, and I was out of my deal within a week. Yeah. And the next song I wrote was Change the World. <laughs> That's the next song I wrote. Okay. They didn't get it. Okay. They didn't get it. So if they'd been nice to me at that time, they would have been the publisher on that song. So I'm without a publisher, and this is in spring of 92, and Tommy and I go up there and demo that song. Fall of 92, Doug Howard calls me on the phone. He had been in the tape copy room at Polygram when I wrote there for five of the six years I wrote there before mm -hmm. he left a year before I did to go get a law degree in D.C. Wow. Graduate of Belmont, master's at Vanderbilt. Now he's going for a law degree. He's in the tape copy room at, at Polygram Music, playing air guitar to every demo I ever brought him. And I would think, he likes my stuff. Uh -huh. He's the last guy that's going to hear it, yeah. but he likes it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so he goes and gets a law degree, and funny thing happens to him in the fall of 92 when he's on his way back. The guy from Australia that runs Polygram Worldwide calls him. He goes, are you done with you? You got your law degree? Yeah, I want you to come back and run the Nashville office. Run it. Look at God. So guess, <laughs> so guess who calls me and says, what are you doing right now? I'm coming back to run Polygram. I want you back over there because I like what you do. Yeah. So in February of 93, I signed a deal. First song I turn in. Changed the world. Can you get this to Eric Clapton? He had just done Tears in Heaven. Ah. And so if he's doing, if he likes that kind of stuff, maybe he'll like this. Well, Time they, means everything. But they got it placed on hold with Winona. And That's right. She did yeah, it first. She did it first. She did but first. that record took two and a half years to come out, and we were being told all the while it was going to be a single. So when the record came out in 95, late 95, she put out one, then two, then three singles that weren't ours. So we were, again, going, okay, we the guy in New York didn't sign us with that song. Winona's not going to single the song. We failed. We failed. Now what? Clapton cuts the song. So how did that happen? Tony Brown okay. has uh, is producing the Wine Owner record back in, you know, we're told in, in 93. Three, yeah. He has a friend, Kathy Nelson. Okay. Come visit. She's, she's a pal of his. Comes from Hollywood, and you see her name as a music supervisor on Touchstone Pictures, Bruckheimer mm -hmm. Smashes, mm -hmm. from, you know, blockbuster films like Con Air, Armageddon. Gotcha. Phenomenon. Okay? Yeah. So she just comes to visit Tony, and I just, again, on a lark. Oh, hey, he said, check out this song I'm going to cut on Winona and played her that demo. So then she goes back to Hollywood, and I don't know how many months go by, a year or whatever, and the film phenomenon is 
hers to do the music supervision for. What's that song I heard in Tony's office? And then got found the song, Robbie Robertson, who mm-hmm. was the exec producer for the soundtrack album. I guess he's the one that contacted Babyface and Clapton and put that collaboration together. Amazing. Yeah. The length of time. You actually started working on the song in what year? 91. Spring of April of 91 is when Tommy said, is this a song this group could work on and do? And it was released by Winona in like 94. Well, the album came out, I think, 95. Yeah. Late 95 or something. And then we were watching the singles go ticking off and they weren't yeah. ours. Yeah. And then summer of 96, I'm sitting in the studio working on a Nicole Smith record with Tommy. Wow. And he says, oh, listen, GK, by the way, we're getting another cut on Change the World. I said, Really? Who? He said, Eric Clapton. Holy cow. And I remember it go back to fall of, uh, I mean, February of 93. Yeah. That's the first song I turned in to Doug and said, can you get this to Eric Clapton? Dang. And I mean, it just, it's amazing how God works. It is and, amazing. And it, I mean, we might sit there and go, but God knew exactly what he was doing with that song and when oh, it was supposed to come out and, yeah. and how it was supposed to come out. And I got to tell you, I love both versions. I'm not even going to sit there and tell you I love one over the other. Right. Winona's version has its own flavor. And yeah. I, because I. Well, can I. Well, yeah, please, come on. A little bit it. of trivia just for your show. Yay. Okay? Um, when the original demo, it didn't go to a guitar solo, but it did do the. Those. My guitar is woefully out of tune. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, but so when Clapton does a solo, yeah, I'm yeah. down a half by the way for all you people trying to tune up. To <laughs> but that, so that became the intro to his song. Mm-hmm. I had played that chord right before a bridge on the original demo, which okay. was change the world, the world. Right? And yeah. so that was Nick's from the Clapton record. It's on yeah. Winona's. I'm like, why did they take that out? And But by the time his record came out, I knew exactly why they took it out. Yeah, I watched Saturday Night Live some weeks or months or something before Clapton was to do the record. Or we found out after he recorded it. But in that period of time, Sting came on Saturday Night Live one night and did his new single. If I ever lose my faith. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I, Same okay, changes. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that could have been a bit of a. That was the bridge. So those were the changes yeah. to the bridge on a little turnaround thing on Change the World. That's great. Okay, yeah. Wow. So, but I mean, okay. So but but that Clapton makes sense. put a guitar solo, which, duh. 